Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you one of the brick walled in my family tree. Now we all have one of these, don't we? That one ancestor that no matter what, we just cannot get past them. <laughs> so this is my three times great grandfather, Richard B. Chapin. I have been working on this guy for years and I've collected plenty of documentation about him, but I just simply cannot find his parents. <laughs> so what I thought I would do today would be show you all of the evidence that I've collected and have you look at it and tell me if you think that you can solve it or is there something that I'm missing? Maybe a fresh pair of eyes will help me. Perhaps you're somebody who lives in the area that he lived in and you could tell me about another record sort of source that I have not thought of. Perhaps you're even related to me and you've figured this out. In any case, if you like solving genealogy mysteries, please help me with mine. <laughs> so let's just first take a look at the evidence and then you can tell me what you think. All right, so for starters, I'll tell you what I do know. My great 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 grandfather is Richard B. Chapin. He was born sometime around 1825 in maybe New York, not New York City, I believe New York State, possibly also Vermont or Massachusetts or New Jersey. <laughs> I know that sounds like a lot of different places, but apparently some of these places were quite close together back then and the borders were a bit less well-defined. In any case, let's not get into the messy bit yet. Richard B. Chapin, born around 1825. He was married to my great-great-great-grandmother, Martha Corbett, and they had 10 children. Now, I'm gonna read these because I can't remember all 10 of them. There was Jane Amanda, born in 1850, Lutheria Arcelia, born in 1851, Richard Henry, born in 1853. Henry Alexander, born in 1854. Harriet Eunice, born in 1855. Mary Eleanor, born in 1858. Anna Elmina, born in 1860. Electa Eliza, born in 1864. Ellen Elizabeth, born in 1866. And Herbert Dewey, born in 1869. <laughs> so they had plenty of children. The easiest way I think to do this will be I will go through every piece of evidence that I have and show you what I've learned. Okay, the first piece of evidence that I have is the 1850 census for Winhall Bennington, Vermont in the United States. So remember, Richard was born in 1825 or thereabouts. And the census is 1850. This is actually the first piece of evidence that I have about Richard. So I don't have a birth record. I don't have a marriage record. I can only find this 1850 census. So let's start with that. Um, what we have is Richard Chapin living with his wife, Martha, and their infant daughter, Jane. This is 1850 when only Jane was born. They were living with Martha's parents at this point. So Alexander Corbett and Mabel Corbett, Martha's stepmother. Um, they were also living with some more Corbetts and, and, and another labourer. So they were farmers and labourers. Um, according to that census, Richard was born in Vermont. One interesting thing about this census, however, is the next door neighbours. <laughs> so living next door are actually some Chapins. We have two Chapin families in adjoining sort of properties. There's Jacob Chapin and his wife, Sarah. And there's also Jonathan Chapin with his wife, Mehedable. So even though I have no definitive link between Richard and these other two Chapin families, I can't help but think it is a huge coincidence that they are living in adjoining properties. So let's keep these Chapins in mind and I will come back to them, but I currently have no documents that link them together other than them living next door on this census. Okay, the 1860 census is the next thing that I'm going to show you. Richard is now living with Martha in Tuscola, Michigan. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, Tuscola? Anyway, Tuscola, Michigan. 
they have moved from Vermont to Michigan and they now have their own farm there. So Richard is listed as being a farmer and he is listed as being born in Vermont. They have three children there with them in 1860 and they are Celia, Mary and Nancy. So Celia is Lutheria Arcelia. Mary is obviously Mary and, and Nancy is actually Anna Elmina. So they're going by sort of nickname, middle names here. But during this time, they have also had four other children um, die. So Jane, the firstborn, seems to be gone. And when I say die, there's not death records for all of them. So Jane, the first child, is just no longer on the records. Their sons, Richard and Henry, who were born in 1853 and 54, are no longer on the records. And Harriet, who was born in 1855, she actually has a death certificate. She died through being burnt. So I think that was actually a fairly common um, occurrence for children back then, just due to like there being more open fires. She was five when she died. So just to reiterate, 1860, Richard and Martha are living with their three daughters and they're living in Michigan now. Okay, in 1870, they are living in Nuego, Michigan. Nuego, Nuego, in Michigan, and they are still farming. Richard's place of birth is now listed as New York, which is where um, a bit of confusion comes in, but from what I've gathered, the border between New York and Vermont, particularly at this time, wasn't particularly distinct. So, so where exactly his birthplace was is a little bit unclear now, but yeah, New York. They still have Lutheria, Mary and Anna living with them, but they have also got a few more children now. They now have Electa, Ellen and Herbert living with them. So they've now got six children there. Okay, 1880 is the last census that I have for Richard. They are now living in Big Rapids in Mecosta, Michigan. Richard's birthplace is once again listed as New York and they have some of their children still living with them. That's Anna, Electa, Ellen and Herbert. So Lutheria and Mary are now both grown up and married themselves. Okay, so that's all the census information that I have on Richard. He actually died in 1888, so I wouldn't expect to have him on any future censuses. But what I have gathered through the census data is that Richard was born either in Vermont or New York or somewhere around that border. He was married to Martha the whole time and he had 10 children, some of whom died before him. When they moved from Vermont to Michigan, they didn't appear to have any more Chapin neighbors after that. So his family were either left in Vermont, if that was his family, or New York, or wherever they were from originally. Richard's death record, it's from 1888. It shows that he died in St. Joseph, Berrien, Michigan. He died of Bright's disease. He was listed as married and aged 63. His birthplace is listed as New Jersey, which is a new one. So I'm assuming that the informant would have been his wife, Martha. Um, you would think that she would know his birthplace, I found it odd that it's jumped from Vermont to New York to New Jersey. I believe that those places are all fairly close together geographically, but once again, it throws a spanner in the works when I'm looking for his birth record. <laughs> and of course, to make things difficult, his parents are listed as unknown. So with the death certificate listing his parents as unknown and without having a birth record, it makes him really difficult <laughs> to trace. Now Richard is also listed in some miscellaneous land records in Michigan. So it appears to be when he was purchasing land. Um, he crops up every now and then, but all it really is is a listing of his name and the land that he was buying. So being that I am Australian and have actually never been to the United States, I have very limited access to American records. Um, I'm actually impressed as to how much I've managed to find online. It's amazing, like these days, the fact that I can get US census records or land records, if I was doing this sort of 30 years ago, it would have been a whole different story. <laughs> but I'm not even sure of what other records may be available. I have tried to sort of dig online into the areas that he was from, places like Vermont, places like New York, places like Michigan, but it's pretty limited as to how much 
I can come up with. There's probably more records on the ground that I just simply don't have access to. So I would love if you are aware of any of these record repositories, if you could tell me where I could look. So that's all that I know for sure. Any, that's all that I can actually confirm. But I do have some extra little tidbits that are sort of hints. So remember back in the 1850 census, we had the next door neighbors who were Chapins. I tried digging into those families and the two families, Jacob Chapins and Jonathan Chapins, are related. So Jonathan and Jacob were actually siblings. And I've traced their family history a little bit just to try to fit Richard into the picture. Now he doesn't neatly fit into the picture, but he can't be excluded from the picture either. <laughs> I found Jonathan the most compelling and that's because some of his children were actually born in New York. So that suggests that he had come from New York and that would work with a lot of the records that suggested that Richard was born there. Now, of course, this is a very weak hint to go off, but I know that Martha's family, the Corbett's actually came from New York. They came from Washington County. In particular, it seems to be a little place called Putnam. And I've managed to find out a lot about the Corbett family back there. So. Martha was born there and they've obviously moved to Vermont at some point. But it's perfectly feasible that Martha and Richard met and married in New York before both of their families moved to Vermont. Once again, we're talking about theories here, but you know how much I love a theory. So as you can see, I'm getting more and more twisted into knots now. I'm coming up with ideas and maybe they mean something, maybe they don't. Knowing that the Corbett's came from Washington County in New York, I looked a lot for Richard's family there and I did not find them. Doesn't mean they weren't there, I just can't find them. <laughs> um, but like I said, I'm very limited by only having access to online records. What else is there? Um, the B, Richard B. Chapin. Um, some people have ancestry family trees and I know <sighs> ancestry family trees, right? Like, <laughs> But sometimes they are hints and we always have to check every hint. There are family trees on Ancestry that list him as Richard Banter Chapin. I have no idea where people got this middle name from. I can't see it on any of the records, though he's almost always Richard B. Chapin. I've never seen his middle name actually written out in full. So I have scoured these trees and they don't seem to have any other records that I don't have. So if they know something that I don't, it's not through those records. They know it some other way. And believe me, I've tried to contact them. I've sent multiple messages asking if they have more information and just been met with pretty much resounding silence. <laughs> um, so I don't know if it's just that they don't know where they got it from, like they've maybe just copied it from other trees, or if they just don't feel like sharing, that's possible too. But Oh God, what I would give to know where that name came from. Banter, that's really strange. I had the theory that his middle name could be Bliss because Jonathan Chapin's wife, Mehetable's maiden name was Bliss. And there were a lot of Blisses around um, the right place, right time. So that's also a possibility. Okay, lastly, I'll just say what became of Richard and Martha's children. So perhaps you've descended from one of these lines and you'll help me. <laughs> so Jane, as far as I can see, died in infancy. We never saw her again. Lutheria was my great great grandmother and she married Timothy Frost. Richard and Henry both seem to have died as children and as already covered, Harriet died when she was five. Mary married Robert McCubrey. Anna married George Wright and Electa married Daniel Rettenhaus. Ellen had two marriages, which was Charles Gardner and then Silvadra Fulmer. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, Silvadra. Um, and lastly, Herbert seems to have dropped off the record, so I think he may have died young, but I can't be sure, so. Okay, that is everything that I know. Now, any of you genealogy sleuths out there, anyone who's good at solving a mystery, anyone who is good at breaking through brick walls, anyone who is related to me out there in the States, or anyone who lives in New York, New Jersey, 
um, Vermont or Michigan who can access any records or even just point me in the direction of a library or a historical society, someone that I can contact because if I could break through this brick wall, it would mean the world to me. I feel like Richard's birth year being around 1825, it's not even that far back. I feel like I should be able to find something, but I've been stuck on this one for years. So thank you so much for watching. If you managed to stick it out to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. And make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. I hope that you are having good luck with your research and are managing to break through some of your own brick walls. Please let me know in the comments if you can break through mine. Please write in the comments if you've got a brick wall of your own and we'll see if anyone can solve it. I hope that you are having a good one and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!